All right, everybody. Here it is. The final part of our limited, limited Dominaria set review. I am Alex, as always. If you haven't already, go and check out my white and blue and my black and red set reviews. I'll put it on the channel. Um, here we go. This is it. This is the last set. This is the last time we'll talk about these cards like this. Well, for today, at least. Um, <laughs> these are our green cards, our gold cards, our artifact and single colorless card, and, of course, the lands that make up all of Dominaria. Um, if you've not watched one of these before, here's how this is going to work. Four-point scale. Um, ones are the cards you should never play. There are even some zeros in this set. Uh, twos are the cards that your decks are typically most made up of. Generic filler, weaker creatures, so on and so forth. Threes are your removal spells. Your, your premium creatures, premium removal spells, typically your first packs in any given pick of, uh, of a draft. And also we have the absolute bombs, which are on four cards that you open up a pack, open up your, your sealed pool, and just go, yep, play in this color because this card is just that powerful. So we also have a couple additional categories. S is for sideboard, B is for build around me. I will make sure that I note those as we go along as well. But let's waste no more time and kick things right off with Adventurous Impulse. A single green mana gets you a common sorcery. Look for look at the top of the cards of your library and reveal a creature or land card from among them. Then put that into your hand and the rest go to the bottom of your library in any order. This is pretty underwhelming, actually. Um, as far as, you know, filtering goes, I would hate to have to pass up a giant bomb that's at the top three cards of my library for the land that I might have needed or a creature that's more, you know, impactful at that point in the game. Ugh, yeah, not not fun here. Solid two, but weak filtering is not something I'm, I'm up for, especially limited when every card and land drop and, and draw actually counts in the, in the greater scheme of things. Uh, next up, we've got Ancient Animus. One in a green instant at common. Puts a plus one, plus one target on our counter on target creature you control if it's legendary. And then it fights target creature you target. And then, oh gosh. Then it fights target creature an opponent controls. I hate the wording there. <laughs> um, this is a really weak two for me simply because the plus one, plus one is legendary dependent. Um, which is a bit of a drawback if you ask me, but fight is always good, especially at instant speed. So not terrible, but not anything great. This is a week two for me for sure. Next up, we have Arbor Armament. Say that five times fast. A single green instant gets you a common that places a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, and that creature gains reach until the end of turn. Good trick against lots of decks with lots of flyers, um, which typically green may have, you know, a bit of a, a, a trouble actually dealing with, but very, very powerful card here indeed. Solid two. Happy to put this in my green decks. Next up, we have the Bayloth Gorger. Two green green creature beast at common 4-4 four, four, that if you kick it for paying an additional four generic, you get three plus one plus one counters on it as it enters the battlefield. Yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> Uh, CMC when it equals your power and toughness, awesome. And if it scales in the late game, even better. Uh, solid 2.5 for me. Happy to play this guy all the time. And, you know, who doesn't love a bail off? Right? Uh, next up, we've got... Oh, sadness. Uh, you can't have any friends, apparently. <laughs> uh, broken Bond, one in a green sorcery at common. Destroy target artifact or enchantment that, that you may then put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, this is sideboard for the time being until it's proven that the the sagas and the other you know artifacts in the set are even more powerful than they look already. At that point, then you might actually merit bringing this in into your main board in some cases. But yeah, as it is, sideboard for the time being. Um, but the uh, the story implications here of, of Nissa leaving the gate the gate watch is actually pretty uh, pretty imp important here. Uh, next up, we have Corrosive Ooze, which I believe is a Hearthstone card. Just saying. Uh, one in a red gets you a common 2-2 two -two that when it blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature, destroy all equipment attached to that creature at the end of combat. Pretty cool, though. Uh, solid 2, uh, solid bear, 2-2 two, two, two for 2. Uh, with upside, always playable in my opinion. Next up, the card that every kicker deck needs to have in it. 
Elfheim Druid. One and a green gets you an uncommon Elf Druid, 0-2, that taps to add a green or taps to add two green. Spend this mana only to cast Kicked Spell. So those guys like Yosu and Silas Khan, I believe it was, the giant Leviathan. That's how you get those guys out. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to be worth it. Um, she is the only way to generate mana primarily for kick spells, at least in this quantity here. So I'm not super sold on her yet, but she is kind of the card you need. Um, I might be more powerful than I'm expecting it to be or less. We'll have to see how this one shakes out, but I'm giving it a strong three right now because it's incredibly powerful to get those kick spells out even faster. Uh, next up, we have Fungal Plots. One in a green enchantment at Uncommon. You may pay one in a green um, to exile creature card from your graveyard, and you may create, or you, then you create one, uh, a 1-1 one, one green Zeppelin creature token. Sacrifice two Zeppelins, and you may gain two life and draw a card. So this is sort of like the first engine we're going to see for the Zeppelin and Thalid deck here. Um, this needs to be built around um, just because you need... A good quantity of creatures going into the graveyard via you know any via self milling or just combat going you know maybe not the way your opponent thinks you want it but when you actually do if you want to generate these these uh, saplings here um, I, I do need to build around this I'm not sure I would just main deck this um, maybe I'm not I'm not 100 sure on that one but it does feel uh, very powerful um, on on it on just on face value here. Next up, we have got an old returning favorite, Gaia's Blessing. A single green and red and one gets you a uncommon sorcery. Target player shuffles up to three cards from their graveyard into their library, and you draw a card. And when it's put into your graveyard from your library, so via self-milling or just milling effects in general, you shuffle your library into your graveyard. So this is actually really powerful. In the late game, if they've killed off three of your big guys, you're like, well, I'm going to get them back and shuffle back in, and we'll draw them again, hopefully. Um, and any, you know, incidental mill that happens actually lets you reload your entire deck, which is very powerful in going into the late game, especially when there aren't any more lands in it. So just something to think about there. Strong two for me. Next up, we have Gaia's Protector. Three and a green for an elemental warrior at common. It's a 4-2 that must be blocked if able. This is apparently some kind of reconstructed Phyrexian thing. Uh, transmuted, apparently. Um, this guy's actually pretty impressive, you know, um, with some combat tricks and some, and, you know, you know, just some crafty plays on your part. This will take down a lot of small to medium sized threats. And if you're able to keep it alive long enough, um, you're definitely going to get your opponent to, you know, eventually give up some creatures that they wouldn't have normally done for taking this guy out. Pretty strong here. Solid two for me. Next up, we have Gift of Growth. A one and a green gets you an instant at common kicker two that untaps a target creature and gives it plus two, plus two at the end of turn. If it was kicked, it gets plus four, plus four. I missed the untap clause the first go around, which makes this card actually a lot more impressive than I first thought it was. Um, to kick it is even better. Again, scaling cards with kicker go to the late game much better than your cards without kicker. So I'm pretty high on this one too as well. This is a solid two for me. Happy to play it here. Next up, we have Grow from the Ashes. This is some kind of Thran machine thingy. Uh, two and a green gets you a sorcery at common, kicker two, and you may search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. If it was kicked, you do it twice. Also, they're not tapped. That's pretty powerful. This is a very, very strong two. Um, not first pickable, so I can't give it, you know, that three, but this is good filler that I'd be happy to have in any green deck to maybe play, you know, if, if I've got some off-color basics in my deck that are for a, a splash that I'm playing. Um, this is a very, very powerful card here. That being said, it is, wait, oh, oh, there he is, there he is. Okay, we're good. Yep, thought I missed one. Grun, the Lonely King, loneliest of the giant monkeys. <laughs> Four green green, legendary creature ape, or ape, uh, a warrior, uncommon, 5-5, five, five. kicker for 3. If it was kicked, um, it enters the battlefield with 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and when it attacks alone, you double its power and toughness. Yikes. That's a one-shot right there when it's kicked. Woo! Solid 3, because uh, this guy is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This guy is bananas. Uh, next up, 
Kalma's Druidic Vow. X green green legendary sorcery at rare. Can only be cast if you have a legendary creature or planeswalker, and you look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield and put the rest into your graveyard. You gotta build around this one for sure. Um, you gotta have the legendary cards in it or make X be big enough to make it matter. Them going into the graveyard if they don't if they don't have the criteria is actually pretty good for some of the engine cards like fungal plots kind of makes this less bad. Um, but this has Commander written all over it. You guys are generating like 40,000 mana on turn one. Flip my deck over and then kill you. That's, I think, what this card is actually for here. But pretty interesting stuff here and probably very, very pretty in foil. Uh, next up, we have the Croson Druid. Two and a green for a Centaur Druid at common. Two, three. Kick it for four and a green. And it enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, you gain ten life. Solid filler. Scales of the late game. Solid two. Now... I have raved about these guys before. We're going to do it again. The Llanowar Elves have returned. A single green mana gets you an Elf Druid that taps at a green mana to your mana pool and is a 1-1. Um, I'm giving this thing a solid 3 here. I will first pick this if the pack is weak. Acceleration is always good and limited. And 1-1s for 1 are never bad either. Very, very powerful card here. Uh, next up, we've got a far less impressive Llanowar Elf. Or maybe I'm... I don't know yet on this guy right here. Um, for or I think this is a girl. Yeah, we'll go. This is a, this is a, this is a lass here. Um, two and a green for an elf scout. Common three two that you pay one and a green to add one mana of any color. This is repeatable, mind you too. So if you've got a couple of cards that are you know off color, you know, maybe some off color legendary or anything like that, um, this gal is the job. Will do the job for you quite nicely. Um, but it is mana inefficient at that, but it needs to be at common at this point. So pretty solid. It's not good, but it's also not great. It's just good filler, though. Next up, we've got the Land of War Scout, one in a green uh, common that puts a that is a 1-3 Elf Scout, and you may put a land card from your battle from your hand on a battlefield just by tapping her. So you know you're just going to ramp, 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 ramp. Um, yeah, really powerful here. As long as you've got lands in your hand, I'm happy to like block with her, then tap her, put the land into play, get the value, so on and so forth. Um, solid 2.5 for me. Um, it's not first pickable by any stretch of the imagination, but in a dedicated green ramp deck that has a lot of big threats at the top end, this is what you want to be doing with this card here. Very powerful. Uh, next up, Mammoth Spider, because apparently Giant Spider just had to be retired. Sure. Uh, four and a green, common, spider, three, five with reach. Solid two. Not much else you can say about that. Next up, we've got Marwyn, the Nurturer. Two and a green, legendary creature, elf druid, at rare. It's a one, one. And when another elf enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Marwyn, the Nurturer, and you may tap her and add a green mana equal to her power. This is kind of a rough one, actually, because there are only eight elves in this set. Granted, most of them are common, so it's, it's a, there's a little push and pull here, I think. Um, so I'm happy to first pick her and then build around her and, you know, ramp out some giant threats here, obviously. Um, but she does need the support. But when she does have the support, you are good to go at that point. A um, little weak on the power side, but other than that, still pretty solid. She gets out of control very, very quickly and probably has a role to play in Standard as well. Possibly even Modern. We'll see. Next up, we have the Mending of Dominaria. Three green green gets you a Saga at levels 1 and 2. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard back to your hand. On level 3, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then shuffle your, li your graveyard back into your library. Wow. <laughs> For when the game has to go really, really long, <laughs> this is going to be the way to do that here. Um, this might be more powerful than I'm giving it credit for. It doesn't really impact the battlefield, but if the game goes super late, like Black Green kind of feels like it wants to do, I can totally see this being you know more powerful than I think it is. As it stands, 2.5 for me. I need to see this in action before I can give it a final grade on it, but it feels very strong regardless. Next up, we have Groot. 
Actually, this is Multani <laughs> Yavamaya's avatar. Four green green. It's a legendary creature. Elemental avatar at mythic rare. Reach and trample. And Multani here gets plus one plus one for each land you control and each land in your graveyard. You may pay one in a green and return two lands to your to you control to your hand. And we'll return Multani back from the graveyard to your hand as well. So, and again, you know, if, if this guy gets killed or this, this Groot tree thing gets killed, you just keep bringing it back and back and back and back. And it's really powerful. This is a solid three for me. I, I like this guy a lot, actually. Uh, next up, we have Nature's Spiral. One in a green uncommon sorcery that returns a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, very, very powerful here. Um, more recursion, solid role player for limited. If you've got something that you need to get back, absolutely playable here. Um, I would almost put this in just about any green deck that I build, actually. So very solid role player for, um, for green decks here. Uh, next up, we have Pierce the Sky. One in a green instant at common deals seven damage to creature with flying. So when you absolutely have to kill the dragon, this is how you do it. Uh, sideboard primarily, um, unless you're sitting at a draft and you notice a lot of blue creatures, blue and white creatures that are going around, typically flyers in this case. At that point, then you can probably get away with main decking this. If not, sideboard this one for sure. Uh, next up, cruising right along through our green cards, we've got Primordial Worm, because every deck needs a big old green dragon, I guess. <laughs> Four green green uh, common seven six creature worm, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> Just a two for me. Nothing fancy. Next up, we have Sapperling Migration. One of the green sorcery kicker for four. Create two Sapperling tokens that are one ones, and if you kick it, you get four instead. So again, this is more fodder for the 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 Thalid Sapperling deck that you can probably draft and be very very powerful. Um, I give it a two um, just because you need the other cards to support the tokens you're getting. So you need those engine cards um, or like the the Lord effects. Surprisingly enough, you need those to make this card really powerful here. Um, but still, if you've got it, it gets really powerful here. Uh, next up, we have the Song of Freilis. One in a green saga. On levels one and two, until your next turn, creatures you control get you gain. Tap to add one mana of any color. On level three, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures then gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until the end of turn. Dear God. Mid-game, this comes down, tap your dudes, play a big thing. Next turn, tap your dudes, play another big thing. Next turn, you kill your opponent. This card is insane. This card is very, very powerful. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, super, super good. Uh, next up, we've got Spore Swarm. This is a three green sorcerer, or instant, I'm sorry, at Uncommon that creates three one one green separating tokens. Again, they really, really want to push the Sapperling token deck here, and this is more fodder for it. So, yeah, if you're in the deck, go for it. And especially if you pick up this little guy right here. The Spore Crown Thalid. One in a green, fungus, uncommon tutu that each creature you control, that or each other, I should say, that's a fungus or a Sapperling gets plus one, plus one. Wow. <laughs> I think. I could be wrong. But I think this is the first occurrence of an actual fungus lord. <laughs> Solid three for me. If you got the deck for it, go crazy with it. And uh, yeah, Thalid Lord. On high. Hallelujah. <laughs> Next up, Steel Leaf Champion. Green, green, green. Elf Knight at rare. 5-4. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Wow. If you can get this guy down fast, maybe off of like, oh, I don't know, a uh, Lana War Elf. Awesome card. Um, this will probably tear through your opponent's early game blockers or, or non-blockers at that point. So this card is really, really powerful. Probably has a role to play in standard and most definitely those more budget-minded mono-green stompy decks in modern. Very, very cool card. And whatever this elf is riding, yeah, I'm not blocking that either. <laughs> That's simple. Uh, next up, we have Sylvan Awakening. This is a really strange card here, but the flavor is absolutely on point. Uh, Tuna Green gets you a sorcery at rare, and until your next turn, all lands you control become 2-2 two -two elemental creatures with reach, indestructible, and 
haste. So it's important to note that if your opponent's going to kill you on their turn, you just go, well, make them all lands creatures, and I have blockers now. Or lots of creatures, lots of lands, I'll make them all creatures, I will swing and kill you. So this is a really powerful card here. Very good way to end the game and in very in very short order, actually. I give this one a three. This might have some room in standard, and I really hope that they just don't settle the wreckage you. And it's also very good that there's no bio blight in this set. Ooh, that'd be gross. Uh, next up we have Territorial Dinosaur or Allosaurus, I'm sorry. I think this is a pygmy allosaurus from Ice Age all grown up. Uh, this is a two green green dinosaur at rare, five five, kicker for two and a green, and if you kick it. You get to fight something on the way down. Awesome. Solid three for me. Very, very powerful card here. And, you know, it's good for uh, dinosaurs because, you know, Ixalan. Next up, we have our last few green cards here. We have a returning favorite in Thorn Elemental. All the way back from... I don't actually know. I forget. Uh, five green green. Uh, seven seven with uh, uncommon elemental. Um, you may have it assigned common image as though it weren't blocked. So... Kind of trample, but better. Pretty stellar here. You just have to be able to ramp to this guy pretty quickly and kill your opponent pretty fast. So yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, Two point five for me. Definitely a cool throwback and a very powerful card indeed as well in the top end for green decks. Uh, next up we have Untamed Kavu. One and a green creature Kavu, uncommon two two kicker for three. Vigilance and trample, and if you kick it, you get three plus one plus one counters on it. Awesome. Five mana, five five vigilance trample. Kicker, kicker, chicken dinner. <laughs> Next up, we've got Verdant Force. Five green, green, green. Elemental at rare, seven, seven. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a one, one green sapperling creature token. Again, another OG reprint. Long live the sapperling empire. I believe this guy showed up first in Scourge, I think. Yeah, I'll go with that, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2.5 for me. Again, if you can ramp into this guy and, you know, or in like Thorn Elemental and all these other big fatty green guys. Wow. Super powerful here. Uh, next up, we've got Wild Onslaught, which has the most adorable art with the whole forest just teaming up to just crush your opponents here. Uh, three and a green for an uncommon instant. Kicker for four. You put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. If this spell is kicked, put two instead. So very, very powerful here. Um, good way to just blow out your opponent. You know, if you've got a bunch of mana and you're going all into the attack, they're probably going to die to this, so um, solid three for me. Um, be careful of this one when your opponent in green swings all out. And finally, our last green card, we have the Yava Maya Shepherd, which I guess is like a shepherd, but it's a shepherd. Oh, it makes sapperlings! Oh, oh man, wizards, you're killing, you're killing me. Two and a green fungus, common, two, two. In the battlefield, get a one, one green sapperling creature token because it sap herds them. <laughs> Solid two for me. Um, three mana two twos are fine. Extra bonus value is even better. Rock and roll. That is the end of the green cards. Now, for the truly degenerate power in this set, let's move on to our multicolored cards. And oh my gosh. Woo. Hello. <laughs> First up, Adeliz, the Cinderwind, who, which is probably the coolest title I can ever imagine for somebody. Hey, what are you? I'm the Cinderwind. Pour one out for him. One blue, red, legendary creature, human wizard, at uncommon, 2-2, two, two, flying haste. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, your wizards get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Damn. <laughs> uh, much better in draft than you, than you can build that ultimate wizard deck, but still plenty powerful. Three mana, two, two flyers are plenty good. And any spells you can cast during combat should make them that much better. This guy's really cool. And we'll probably see some commander play as well. Moving on to Arvad the Cursed, a friendly vampire. Three black, white for a legendary creature. Vampire Knight, uncommon. Three, three, death touch, lifelink that gives other legendaries you control. Plus two, plus two. Uh, this is a solid three for me, especially if you are in the Black White Knight deck. Um, I have a feeling that there's some kind of wacky five color draft deck here that I'm not seeing that's going to give you the ability to just pump an entire army of, of the legendary guys and it's going to be awesome. And yeah. <laughs> solid three for me. I like this guy quite a bit. No! 
not as much as I like Ariel, though. The Knight of Wind Grace. Two white, black, legendary creature, human knight, at rare, 4 4 with vigilance. You may pay two and tap Miss Ariel, the Knight of Wind Grace, and make a 2 2 knight, uh, to white knight token with vigilance. You can also pay a black and tap X untapped knights you control and destroy target creature with power X or less. So here's the fun thing. They have Vigilance, you're attacking, before they block you, okay, cool, they're still attacking, tap them, get you good. And that's really powerful. <laughs> really, really cool stuff here, actually. Uh, she is an absolute 3.5 for me. Um, a little bit of an investment to get her going, but once she does, um, she becomes very powerful. This is probably one of the best first picks if you're willing to wager on a multicolor card in this set. Insanely powerful. As is Daragaz, reincarnated. Four black, red, greens of Jund colors here. Legendary creature dragon, mythic rare, 7-7, seven, seven, flying, trample, and haste. If it would die, instead exile it with three egg counters on it because it can just come back to life. At the beginning of upkeep, if it is exiled with an egg counter on it, remove that egg counter. Then, if there are no egg counters on it, return it to the battlefield. So it's like a suspend kind of type thing here. Um, super powerful. The only thing that knocks this guy is having being in three colors. But that being said, um, there are plenty of ways to filter mana to be the colors you need it to be. So Daragaz is actually super powerful here and very, very scary. Uh, next up, we've got Garna the Blood Flame. Uh, three red black for a legendary creature human warrior at uncommon 3-3 three, three, with flash. Weird. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that are put there from anywhere this turn. And other creatures you control have haste. So, opponent wraths to the board, massive trade in combat, in step, flash in, pull these guys back up in your hand, play the cheap ones, swing and kill. You should see how this works. Uh, solid three for me. Um, there's very clearly uh, this push to be this aggressive black red pseudo recursion engine deck as well here um, for Draft Unlimited. So I like this, and there's probably some pretty cool stuff you can do with this in uh, Commander as well. So I like this guy a lot. Or lady, I'm sorry, this lady a lot. Uh, next up, we have Grand Warlord Rada Shebek. Um, two red green legendary creature elf warrior at rare three four with haste and whenever one or more creatures you control attacks add that much mana in any combination of green and or red until end of turn you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end Ooh, so if i've got a bunch of really high kicker cost spells in red and green i can use this to generate the mana to get those those spells out faster <gasps> <laughs> yeah, Lorada is really powerful here. Even by, you know, just on stats alone, perfectly playable. And, you know, obviously the green mana is very, very... The, the mana flaring ability here is actually really powerful as well. So there's a lot you can do with this. Um, very, very powerful card. Solid 2.5 for me. Um, needs a little bit of support to make her really powerful, though. Um, kind of like Halar, the Fire Fletcher. The What? Whatever. <laughs> I'm so over wizards making sense of their titles that it just, whatever at this point. Uh, one red green elf archer, uncommon legendary creature, 3 3 with trample. Whenever you cast spell, if that spell is kicked, put a plus one plus one counter on Halar the Fire Fletcher. Then Halar deals damage equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it to each opponent. Damn. <laughs> With enough kicker spells in your deck, um, uh, Halar here can just get completely out of control. Very, very powerful card here. Um, yeah, very cool. Again, Commander's probably going to love this for reasons that I can't comprehend right now. So, you know, go crazy with it. Next up, the captain herself is back. Joyra, no longer of the get-to, although I imagine she still is. Um, but she is now the Weatherlight Captain, and she doesn't worry about Suspend anymore and casting free Emrakuls and Progenitus's. That's not what she's about anymore. She just wants to draw cards. For uh, two blue and a red, you have 3-3 three, three, Human Artificer Legendary Mythic that whenever you cast a Historic Spell, draw a card. Oh, I wish she was better. Oh, man. Like, obviously, in the deck that has a bunch of Historic Spells, she's very, very good. You don't need them to enter the battlefield to actually trigger the card draw, so there's that. Um, 
But uh, yeah, this is uh, she's she's plenty good by herself. But if she had like something else that did other things, you know, like Rada or or Halar here, I'd be a little bit more inclined to say that she's better. But as it stands, she's just a two. Um, Commander, go crazy with this one. I'm on you're on your own for that one. Super powerful though, though. Very very cool card. Uh, next up, we've got oh look another commander card. <laughs> Joda, an Archmage Eternal for one, a blue, a red, and a white. You get a 4-3 Legendary Human Wizard at rare that flies, and you may pay Wooburg. White, blue, black, red, green, rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. No reason to put this in your deck. This is an absolute one. This might even be a zero, um, unless you've got some crazy filtering deck that can really just take advantage of every legendary that you pull at every big bomb. I don't know, commander only, because if you don't want to play Reaper King or Ramos Dragon Engine or Progenitus or any of the other gold legendary, the, the five gold legendaries out there, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> what I do know though, is that Muldratha, the Grave Tide, Grave Tide, wow. Uh, is insanely powerful. For three, a black, a green, and a blue. Salt Eye Colors here. You get a legendary creature, elemental avatar, at mythic rare, 6-6. Six, six. During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of a of each permanent type from your graveyard. So land, enchantment. You, you see where I'm going with this one. This is insanely powerful. And again, if you've got the ways to filter the blue mana that you'll need, because probably you'll be in some sort of uh, green-based deck here, either blue-green or or green black one of those two here um there are ways to filter the mana to get this guy into play and just be absolutely ridiculous um yeah this moldrotha he or she or it whatever this is insanely powerful or very very scary and very very good in commander so there you go uh, next up, we have the Oath of Teferi. Three white, blue, legendary enchantment at rare. When it enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent you control and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. You may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than only once. That clause right there saves this from being a zero. If you have the... I guess there's two planeswalkers that go well with this. Um, that are actually somewhat in the colors for this one. Um, that is the only time you should play this. Otherwise, don't even touch it. And I feel really bad if this is in your sealed pool because it sucks. Next up, we've got Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Oh my god. Five white, black, legendary sorcery, rare. Return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you've been doing some serious self-milling or just letting things die left and right, discarding cards galore, and they just happen to all be legendary permanents, they're not dragons, but <laughs> this card's really powerful. Uh, build around me, this is obviously more tailored towards, you know, the commander and, you know, constructed format crowds, but still very, very powerful and will single-handedly up in the game if this resolves with, I would say, any more than three targets. Very, very powerful and very, very scary and very pretty in foil, I bet. Next up, we've got Raf Capuchin, Ship's Mage, that allows you to play your historic spells as though they had flash. Uh, he is a two, a white, and a blue for a three, three, human wizard, legendary, uncommon, flash, and flying as well. Uh, yeah, Capuchin's absolutely fine. Um, on his own, he's completely serviceable, and then any number of historic spells that you draw after casting him, gravy, baby. Very, very powerful here. Um, yeah, 2.5 from me. Awesome stuff here. Uh, next we have Rona, Disciple of Gix, who I'm pretty sure is just Dream of the Eternals from the Sandman series. Uh, one blue, black, legendary creature, human artificer at uncommon. Uh, when Rona enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic card from your graveyard. You may cast non-land cards exiled with Rona. Uh, she's a 2-2, and you may pay 4 and tap her to exile the top card of your library. Um, you've got to build around her to make her playable at this point. 3-minute um, 2-2 two -two is fine, um, but the full ability here really needs something like that terrible blue card precognition field to actually say, well, look at the top. Okay, cool. Exile it. Cast it. Good, good at, all, at that point. But... 
I'm not sure why you just wouldn't cast them normally. I don't know. Um, yeah, Rona is 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 very powerful, um, but in a very narrow way, and just needs a lot of support to make her as impactful as I think that she is here. But still, you know, cool card for sure. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Shana Sisse's Legacy. This is uh, Captain Sisse's uh, little sister, I guess. Here, uh, green white legendary creature, human warrior, add uncommon. It's a zero zero, but it's plus one plus one for each creature you control and she can also not be the target of abilities your opponent target of okay so it's just abilities that's i missed that so i thought it was spells or abilities just abilities here your opponent's control so it's a little kind of it's a narrower um hex proof here but she's really powerful early game good late game good great um target for your auras and other pump spells here to really put the game away Awesome card here. Shauna's amazing here. I imagine there's going to be some kind of green-white aggro deck that takes full advantage of her in standard as well. Real powerful. Next up, we have Slimefoot the Stowaway. Oh, how cute. Uh, one black green for a legendary creature, Fungus. Uncommon 2-3. When a sapling control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. You may pay for and create a sapling uh, creature token that is a 1-1. One, one. Armies in a can are good, always. If you have the support for this guy or gal, I'm not going to try to even guess there, but Slimefoot here, rock and roll. Um, you can all the support you have from all the other sapling cards here. Just make this make this uh, creature here super super powerful here, and just becomes incredibly destructive here. Gets out of control. Two point five for me. Just a little bit weak and needs some support to really be good, but can easily fireball your opponent right out of the game if you've got the right setup for it. Next up, we've got. Merfolk. I uh, miscounted all the Merfolk in the blue set review. Sorry about that. This is Tatyova, Benthic Druid. Three blue green, legendary creature, Merfolk Druid, add uncommon, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain a life and draw a card. Wow! This is really powerful! <laughs> Insanely powerful! Um, if you can get Tatiova down early in the game off of any acceleration, um, your opponent needs to kill this end fast. Like, absolutely wins the game on the spot because of all the life you're gaining, all the cards you're drawing. First pickable, I think, and an absolute target for any removal your opponent has. Protect her at all costs and win the game very easily. Next up, we've got... What could possibly be, and I might get some flack for saying this, the most powerful Planeswalker, in, at least in, in these colors, that we have seen in a very long time. Full stop. <laughs> Teferi Hero of Dominaria, three white blue, legendary Planeswalker Teferi, Mythic Rare obviously, starts at four loyalty, plus one, draws you a card, at the beginning of the next end step, untap two lands. Wow. Minus three, put target non-land permanent on, into its owner's library, third from the top. Wow. Minus eight, you get an emblem with, whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent an opponent controls. Like, Venser did something kind of close with his ultimate, which is, you know, Venser was decent enough. But this is amazing if you are in blue white or even in white find a way to splash to fairy or if you're in blue find a way to splash to fairy your deck the untapping two lands and drawing a card especially in control decks in standard and maybe even modern play this on five untap two lands logic knots i'm just saying this card is so freaking powerful it's not even funny solid four for me Probably the strongest card in this set. Maybe. I'm hyper hyperbole, obviously, but damn, this card is good. Um, there, there is one more contender for that spot, actually. We'll get to him in a moment, actually. Uh, finally, our last gold card is Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. Three red, white for a legendary creature. Angel, Artificer. Add uncommon. Three, three. Flying in first strike. Decent stats by, her, by herself. But whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return the card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Nothing is too broken to men. I like her style. So this kind of negates the, uh, the worry that I usually have about auras going to the graveyard if my creature that's equipped to them gets bounced. So Tiana just goes, hey, 
I'll put that back in your hand and we'll keep playing the game here. She's really powerful. Um, by her, on her own stats, she's completely fine, you know, for an angel. And then any, you know, additional value get out of her extra abilities are perfectly fine by themselves as well. So solid two for me. Um, I, I still, I don't like playing artifacts or, you know, equipment and auras to for limited. But if it's open and available, I will go that direction because, you know, Tiana is a really great engine for that. That was the last gold card, guys. We are in the home stretch. We are into our artifacts. And we actually have one colorless card to talk about first. You know who it is. Oh boy. Karn, the Scion of Urza. Probably the other most powerful card in the set. For four generic mana, yeah, not seven, eight, nine, or a million. No Tron players. You can't abuse this thing super fast. Probably still can, I don't know. Legendary Planeswalker Karn. Um, Mythic Rare, 5 Loyalty, plus 1, rule the top 2 cards of your library, an opponent chooses one of them, put that card into your hand, and exile the other with a silver counter on it. Cool. Minus 1, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. Cool. Minus 2, create a 0-0 zero, zero colorless contract, construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact you control. Cool. <laughs> Um, this is probably going to break its way into Modern, Standard, Commander, and just, wow, this card is so freaking powerful that any, any, any color can play it, obviously. I, I, I don't know what Karn will do, but man, this is impressive and very, very powerful here. Just the, the raw card advantage here, and he just ticks up so fast. I mean, hell, Affinity could play this, maybe. That's that's kind of a stretch there. But my god, powerful, powerful card here. Absolute for definitely throw to Teferi in terms of strongest card in the set by a long shot. And let's get to some boring artifacts now. First up, we have the Esther Glider, three, three generic mana for a bird construct, two one common flying that can't block. Feels a little over costed from my, in my opinion, um, but it's still a, a perfectly reasonable aggressive flying attacker. So decent, solid filler, solid two for me. Uh, next up, we've got the Amaranthine Wall. Four generic mana for a artifact creature wall. Uh, uncommon, zero six defender, pay two and give it indestructible until the end of turn. If you wanna go long, this is how you do it because good luck getting through this big old thing. <laughs> Solid filler. This is a two for me. Uh, next up, we've got a cool flavor throwback in the Black Blade Reforged. Two generic mana, legendary artifact, equipment at rare, and gives the equipped creature plus one, plus one for each land you control. Uh, legendary creatures get to equip this by for three, and regular creatures get to equip it for seven. It spilled the blood of one Elder Dragon before. In Gideon's hands, it might taste another. Nicobolus? Probably. Uh, yeah, this is super powerful. Um, the, the, I give it the, I only give it a 2.5 just because of the legendary clause to get, you know, a cheaper equip. But if you do have the creatures in your deck, which of which there are many, um, this is incredibly powerful. Um, this will literally just start forcing your opponent to block every turn and makes this card literally just the abyss at that point. So very, very powerful card here. Um, probably has some implications in, you know, um, other formats, more constructive formats here. Um, next up, we have the Blood Tallow Candle. One generic man gets you an artifact at common. Pay six and tap it. Ouch. You sacrifice the candle and target creature gets minus five, minus five until the end of turn. I guess if you really need some removal, you can go with this. If not, eh, don't bother. Not gonna happen. Next up, we have one of our... Uh, there are a few zeros in this set, surprisingly, because this card has much bigger implications in constructed formats. Uh, this is Dampening Sphere. Two generic mana for an artifact at uncommon. If a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces a colorless mana instead of any other types and amount. Each spell a player cost, uh, cast costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. Wow. This has implications in modern, legacy, and vintage written all over it. 
Um, possibly even standard. I don't think it has the impact as it, much as it does in older formats as it does in that format. Um, but yeah, there's no reason to play this in limited, draft, sealed, whatever. Um, pick it if you need it for your, your eternal decks, but beyond that, just don't even touch this one. Flat out zero for our limited, limited purposes here. Uh, next up, we have Four Bears Blade. Three generic mana, artifact equipment at rare, gives the equipped creature plus three, plus zero, and has vigilance and trample. Whenever this creature dies, however, you put the blade onto a target creature you control. So a pretty cool way of getting around the equip need um, for creatures here, or paying the equip cost, I should say. Uh, this is a solid 2.5 for me. Vigilance and trample are you know incredibly powerful abilities, obviously. And just the ability to forego equipping it again makes this card very powerful. Solid 2.5 for me. I like it a lot. Not as much as I like this next card, however. Good old Gilded Lotus. Five generic mana artifact at rare. Taps to add three mana of any one color. Because Black Lotus was too powerful, of course. So this is what we get instead. Um, yeah, this is an absolute uh, first pick for me. Goes in any deck. Gives me, obviously, more mana to play bigger threats, more threats. Really powerful card here. Um, might not see the play that it um, in standard, but obviously, you know, Commander loves this. You know, there are plenty of places for this card. It's very, very powerful, very iconic. So, yeah, very powerful card for me. Solid three here. Next up, we have the Guardians of Koilos. Five generic mana, 4-4 four, four Construct Common. As it enters the battlefield, you return another target art historic permanent you control to its owner's hand. So let's say you've got like two of these. You attack, they block it, it dies. I'll play the other one. I'll get back the other one. And you just the cycle continues. Um, but you do need a little support here to make this thing be really powerful here. Um, I think it's at best with other sagas that have already gone off, um, preferably Frexian scriptures. Um, to keep artifact creatures like like our friend here, the Guardians, around longer. So really powerful card here. Um, definitely need some support, but I'd be happy to play this card quite often as long as I have some support for it. Next up, we have got the Helm of the Host. Four generic mana, legendary artifact, equipment at rare. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of a equipped creature. Except the token isn't legendary if the equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste, equips for five. Uh, this is incredibly expensive for what you're getting out of it, but if your opponent doesn't check it, they lose the game pretty handily. Obviously, this is much more of a commander thing here. You know, the Kali of the Vast decks will love this to put in, you know, Crystal Brand and Avacyn all in the same turn. Go crazy with it. Solid two for me. Um, probably not going to go out of my way to actually play this card here. Uh, next up, we have the Howling Golem. Three generic mana gets you an artifact creature golem at uncommon, 2-3. And as it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. Ugh, I don't like letting my opponents draw free cards. Um, for three mana, I can do a lot better, I think. This is pretty generic, weak filler. If I need it, I'll play it, but I really don't want to. So I'm going to give this one a pretty, pretty unit, pretty... Um, Pretty unanimous, unanimous pass here, but not this next card. Ah, oh, to leave your opponents out in the cold, just unleash the Icy Manipulator. Four generic mana, gets you an artifact, add uncommon, pay one and tap it to tap target artifact, creature, or land. Man, this is like Ice Age, or I forget how old this card actually is. Ice Age for sure, but yeah, uh, Manipulator here is absolutely amazing. Um, I will happily play this in any deck. I will first pick this in some cases. It's repeatable removal for their biggest guy. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very, very powerful card. Solid three for me. Uh, next up, we have the most adorable card in the set next to the Arcane Flight. This is Joyra's Familiar. Four generic mana for an artifact bird creature at uncommon 2-2 that flies and makes your historic spells you cast cost one less to cast. So... Maybe chain these together, kind of as like a pseudo affinity thing going on here. Um, I don't know, but uh, yeah, this is perfectly fine. Um, it's a serviceable beater, serviceable beater, you know, on its own, and any you know discount you can get on your more powerful legendary historic spells are just all the better. So I like the familiar here just fine. It's a solid two for me, and I think it's adorable. <laughs> Next up, we've got the jousting lance, one of the most 
pure and simple equipment I've ever even seen in my life for as far as mana goes. Uh, two generic mana, common equipment, gives equip, equip creature plus two, plus zero, and as long as it's your turn, uh, equip creature gains first strike. Pretty sweet, equips for three. Um, it's unimpressive, unfortunately. You know, I give it a two, but if you need some equipment, you know, to have some more reach in your deck, especially if you're playing like an ag aggressive red deck, I can see the merit, but even still, not that impressive. Next up, we've got the Juggernaut, bitch. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know that meme, YouTube it. Uh, four generic mana for an uncommon 5-3 artifact creature juggernaut that attacks each combat if able and cannot be blocked by walls. Yes, because back in the day, we had walls as creature types. <laughs> Definitely a strong two. Um, we'll probably get through one time before it dies, maybe. I don't know. Still playing powerful out here, actually. Uh, next up, we have a card that is insanely powerful if unchecked. Mishra's Self-Replicator. Five generic mana, artifact creature, assembly worker. We've been seeing a lot of assembly workers recently in sets, actually. Huh, fun. Um, rare 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you may pay one. If you do, create a token that's a copy of Mishra's Self-Replicator. So we had Mirror Works in Scars of Mirrodin that was able to copy the cards you were casting. This one just copies itself and just makes a giant army. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, solid build around me card, but definitely a very powerful three for me. Really, really powerful here. Although not as powerful, although it does combo with Mishra's Self-Replicator, I guess, in a way. But anyway, this is Mox, that's right, Mox Amber. Eventually, Wizards will figure out how to make good Moxes, and I think that they're onto something here. Opal, probably too strong, but let's not get into that debate right now. Zero mana. That's right, zero mana. Legendary artifact, mythic rare. Tap to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. As long as they're in play, this is basically whatever color you need it to be. <laughs> yeah, first pick this bad boy here. Um, as we've said already, a good majority of the set is legendary, specifically creatures in this case, and there are ways to make creatures also legendary as well. Um, so this card is very, very powerful. First pick, probably will be seeing play in standard and all the formats as well. Awesome, awesome card. Absolute four for me here. Next up is a very innocuous card, but I think is going to be a very important card. Um, for this limited format. This is Navigator's Compass. One generic mana gets you an artifact at common. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. You may tap it, and until the end of turn, target land you control becomes the basic land type of your choice in addition to its other types. So you have some of these higher-end mythic multicolor threats like Darigaz or Muldrotha, the Grave Tide. This is how you get around that. Um, we have the angel with the green green activated ability to make it basically be Gavany Township. That's what allows us to do this easily here. I would probably take this over... If I'm in a multicolor deck, I'm going to play this because I need a good way to fix my mana to cast these big impactful spells. And the three life has nothing to scoff at either. So um, 2.5 for me, this card is going to be, I think, underrated to begin with, but by the end of this format, limited, of the limited format for Dominaria, this is going to be a pretty important pick here. I really do like the card a lot here. Uh, next up, we have Pardic Wanderer. I do not know what Pardic means. I looked it up last night. I have no idea what that, what that word actually stands for. Uh, but he is 6 generic mana for an artifact creature golem at common 5-5 five, five with Trample. Yep. Decent mid-range filler, solid two, but unimpressive. Next up, we've got the Power Stone Shard. Three generic mana for an artifact at common that taps to add one generic mana for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. Um, I don't think there are enough high CMC cards that really warrant playing this unless you are like deep into the the non-green kicker decks that things like have things like Josu in them, perhaps. Um, maybe one or two in your deck are good enough for a, a nice little four mana boost here, but kind of unimpressive. I don't think it's good enough in, individually. You need multiples, obviously, to make it actually be worth it. Um, so this is a solid two for me. I might be proven wrong on this one, but I'll need to see it first. 
Next up we have Shield of the Realm. Two generic mana for an uncommon equipment artifact. If a source would deal damage to a creature, prevent two of that damage and equips for one. Um, I will never play this. 95% sure I'll never play this. Um, I imagine that some of you out there are really high on this though. This will be annoying to play against, but I think it's really just a, a small road bump, road, road bump um, to you know winning the game. I would not worry about you know taking this card or putting it in my decks ever for limited defense here in Dominaria. Next up, we've got another just incredibly simple and elegant piece of equipment here in the Short Sword. One generic mana gets you an artifact equipment for common, gives the equip creature plus one, plus one, and equips for one. Sometimes the only difference between a martyr and a hero is a sword. <laughs> How true. Um, just it's, it's, it's a one for me, though. Um, very rarely will, one, will, a, will a plus one, plus one bonus be enough to swing a game in any direction. Highly unimpressive, but very, very simple. Very elegant, but albeit very beautiful art here as well. Uh, next up, we have Skittering Surveyor. Three generic mana for a 1-2 artifact creature construct at common. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and of course, shuffle your library. Why this doesn't put it into play is beyond me. Nope. Not unless I'm in a multicolor deck that needs a lot of off-color basics. Really unimpressive. Uh, next up, we have Sorcerer's Wand. Finally, an equipment that I'm actually going to say something nice about. Uh, one generic mana gets you an artifact equipment at uncommon. A creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. If this is a wizard instead, though, it deals two and equips for three. In a good wizard deck, this is actually terrifying. You know, for all the instable damage that deck is doing with its ability to have haste creatures and burn spells, this very well could be a very powerful card in Dominator Limited. So I'm going to say this one's good right now, and I cannot wait to try it out and see if I'm actually right. This card is really cool, I think. Next up, we have Sparring Construct. A single generic mana gets you an artifact creature construct at common that when it dies, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. This is pretty unimpressive filler, in my opinion, actually. Um, the bonus of getting the counter on something else as it dies is pretty solid. Um, if you're in a more aggressive deck, I can see taking this a little bit higher than other cards normally you would um, to just like go one drop into into two one drops into a two drop and a one drop. You know, you, you see the curve here. Um, and as they you know are forced to block it or die, you get a little bit of bonus on the back end of it. So unimpressive, but I can see the the need for the need for an aggressive deck. Into the home stretch here, people. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me so so long. Next up is Thran's Tem or just Thran Temporal Gateway. Four generic mana gets you a legendary artifact. Rare, pay four and tap it. You may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. I th this is obviously for the commander crowd, like no doubt about that, 100%. Um, there might be some ridiculous five color historic deck that is built around this. It's like base green that does a little bit of ramping and then puts this into play. And then just start dropping bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb. Sure, at that point, it's good. Um, as it stands, this is build around me, plain and simple. Solid two for me, though, when it is. Um, definite some, definitely some, some hoops to jump through and some very uh, stringent uh, deck building uh, restrictions here as well. So that being said, Traxos, Scourge of Krug. No idea where Krug is, but who cares? Uh, four generic mana. Holy crap, this thing costs four. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, legendary artifact creature construct with trample. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. It enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever you cast a historic spell, though, you untap it. So he needs some help getting up, and I think I found the way to do it. We'll get to that in a moment, though. Next up, we have Urza's Tome. Two generic mana artifact uncommon. Uh, tap three in it, pay, draw a card, and discard a card unless you exile a historic card from your graveyard. That exile clause isn't all that much of a downside. I don't mind to discard a card sometimes. You know, good filtering is always, you know, at a premium in limited debt and limited formats. So this is perfectly fine filler here. Um, you know, and if you do have, you, you do want to keep the cards in your hand, obviously you have the ability to do so just by having some um, historic cards in your graveyard. So powerful here. Um, 
I'll need to see this in action. It might be better than I think it is, but for the time being, it's just really solid filler here. Ah, coming up to our second to last historic card here. Voltaic Servant. Two generic mana for a 1-3 artifact creature construct at common that at the end of your end step, untap target artifact. Truly is the missing piece in search of a puzzle. <laughs> and you know how we said that tracks us needed help getting up? Right there. <laughs> and our very last artifact card, this is it, the Weatherlight itself. Four generic mana, legendary artifact vehicle. If we just have like one vehicle in every set, or just like a couple, like that's totally cool. Like there are there are there are vehicles, there is transportation everywhere in magic. Like I think we can just keep seeing stuff like this in every set. I'm cool with that. Very, very neat. Um, flying, whenever it deals damage to a or common damage to a player, look at the top five cards of your library and reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on your bottom of your library in any random order. Cruise for three. It's interesting that Joyra can crew this by herself. Fun flavor there. Uh, yeah, this is very powerful here, I think. Um, you know, to get through in the air, it's hard to block this thing. Um, Obviously, I would want to have a surplus of historic cards to make this thing even more powerful than it already is. Um, so with roughly the 36% of the set being historic like we've already looked at, um, decent odds that this is going to find something that you've put in your deck more than likely, or even just to filter out cards on the top of your library trying to find you know that next bomb. So very, very powerful stuff here that I like a lot, actually. And here we go. The final part of the Dominaria set review for limited play. These are our lands. And there are some good ones and there are some map outright stinkers. Uh, first up is the Cabal Stronghold. This is a, uh, not even a swamp. <laughs> this is a, a rare land that taps for a generic mana and you can pay three and tap it to add black for each basic swamp you control. Uh, if you're playing mono black, here's your land. It's no Cabal Coffers, but you know what could be, that card's broken. Um, yeah, this is good enough for modern and standard and commander and yeah, it, don't bother with this one. Okay, these next couple of cards, I, I have a very generalized sweeping statement for all of the enemy colored buddy lands, Clifftop Retreat, Hinterland Harbor, Isolated Chapel, uh, Sulphur Falls, and Woodland Cemetery. Play them if they're in your colors. They are a solid two. There's no benefit to not playing them. Whatever. They're going to be great in standard as, as they've always been. That's it. <laughs> Next up, though, we've got some cards I have to talk about here. The first one is, these are the Memorial Cycle here. The first one is Memorial to Folly. These all end up, end up, end up battlefield tapped. Add the color that they would, so this one adds the black, and you can pay two and a black and tap it, sacrifice Memorial to Folly, and return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, black likes this recursive ability here. Decent regrowth effects. I like them just fine. Um, maybe I need this, maybe I don't. If I've got a good threat that I need to get back, I can see adding like one of these to my deck. No big deal here. Uh, next up, we have Memorial to Genius, and it's it's interesting. I will note that a lot of these have characters in them. I don't, I can't identify most of them except for one that we'll get to in a moment that actually references some legendary creature from Magic's past. Here, I just don't know who they are, unfortunately. Um, Memorial to Genius is our blue one. Adds a blue. You may pay four or four to blue and tap it. Second, draw two cards. This is the one that I will play if I'm playing blue. You know, lands that draw cards. Um, the blue one from Battle for Zendikar was quite powerful. Um, and I believe this one is as well. So very powerful card. Good card draw, especially late in the game. Um, and you've got excess mana and nothing to do with it. Next up, we have Memorial to Glory. Adds a white, enters tapped. Three white, tap sack it. Make two white, one one. Uh, Soldiers of creatures, Creature Tokens, not knights. They don't have Vigilance. They don't add to the overall power of the knight deck. Kind of underwhelming, but, you know, if you need blockers, you got blockers. Uh, next up, Memorial to Unity. Comes into play tapped. Adds a green. Pay two a green. Tap it and sack it. Look at the top four cards of your top five cards of your library. Reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. The rest go on the bottom in a random order. Yeah, again, perfectly reasonable here if you need um, to find that bomb. Um, yeah, perfectly fine. 
Uh, next one, and one of the few I can actually identify the character in, this is Memorial to War, has Corona the False God in the background. I actually did some research on on, uh, on Corona last night. That's an interesting story right there if you're curious about that one. Uh, uncommon, enters tapped, four a red, tap, sack, destroy target land. Uh-uh, not even worth it in the in limited. Almost a zero. <laughs> Uh, then we have Sulphur Falls, Wilden Cemetery again. If they're in your colors, play them. Or if you're trying to splash, play them. And the very last card in the set, it sucks to end on such a stinker. For, for this set, is so good. I love everything about this set. The very last card, Zalfirin Void, is an uncommon land. Enter the battlefield, you scry one, and you tap to add a colorless mana. I, I get it. The color, the, the art is very evocative, being literally black and white, as far as I can tell. There might be a little bit of gradient texture, like brown texturing in there. Um, nope. Don't play this. <laughs> Card sucks. <laughs> and that is it. We have done it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This has been Alex, as always, for the ENC News Flash and Desperate Ravings. Um, all 269, well, I guess we have to, you know, look at the lands, you know, sure. Um, 269 cards for Dominaria. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you are excited for your pre-release. I know I am. Um, let me know down in the comments, what did you open? What were your bombs? Let me, let me know the bad beat stories and the good beat stories. I'm always ready to talk to you guys. Um, so be on the lookout for, you know, new episodes coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to talk about the pre-release, you know, what's going to happen to Standard from Dominaria, and we're just going to, like the set it says, let's gather legends and battle it out. So, thank you again for watching. I will see you guys very, very, very soon. As always, you know, this has been Alex for the EOT News Flash. Desperate Ravings. Keep it going.